I knew that there was a family secret about my Aunt Emma. The way that I found out was to read it in the newspaper. And I saw this picture of a 21-year-old standing on the steps of City Hall with her fist in the air. And it described her as Emma Tanayuka Brooks, the charismatic leader of a movement. looking at a 2007 U.S. history textbook and uh, scanning to see all of the times that it talked about the labor movement and it seems there's very little mention of anybody who's not a white or um, a white immigrant in these big labor history moments and so a lot of times Latina and Latino activists are left out of this. Um, the one mention there was of Latino activism was with the United Farm Workers and Cesar Chavez is the only person mentioned in there. When history books mention the legacy of Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers, they often leave out the Latinas who also made great strides in the movement. In a nation that regularly fails to recognize the contributions of minority groups, it's not a big surprise that women like Dolores Huerta and Helen Chavez are left out of the story. But even before the still powerful UFW came onto the scene, Latinas were shaping the labor landscape across the US. I think one of the most um, incredible and important figures in Latino civil rights and labor activism is a Guatemalan woman by the name of Luisa Moreno. She is born in Guatemala in like 1907 and she comes from a very privileged family. She's educated, she is a writer and a thinker, she's very intellectual. And then she decides to kind of forego her wealth and move to the United States. Uh, she moves to New York and settles in Harlem, begins work as a seamstress and she then starts organizing local Puerto Rican uh, women who are working in the garment industry. Moreno's work in labor activism only grew from there. In 1935, the American Federation of Labor recruited Moreno as a professional organizer. She's probably one of the first women and like one of the first Latinas to cross the boundaries into the, the American Federation of Labor. I think one of the things that's most exciting about Moreno, Luisa Moreno, is that she uh, was this excellent coalition builder and she travels all around the country doing this kind of organizing, traveling to organize cane workers in New Orleans, and tuna packing workers in San Diego, and women in cigar factories of Florida. We think of the Latino labor movement as really starting to catalyze with the United Farm Workers, but she's out there doing this work 20 years earlier, which helped pave the way for these movements that came later. In 1950, Moreno faced deportation proceedings for her connections to the Communist Party. But before she left voluntarily, she said this at her hearing. They talk about deporting me, but they can never deport the people that I've worked with and with whom things were accomplished for the benefit of thousands of workers, things that can never be destroyed. At the end of the day, you can deport the ideas and the, and the support that she provided within the labor movement uh, in Latino history. Luisa Moreno's work spans several states, but a young Mexican-American woman named Emma Tenayuca made history right in her hometown. I wanted to tell you a story um, because you're with time. One of the things we came across was this little article in Time, the um, interviewer asked her some question like she was kind of a newlywed and they said you know how how is it working in your household you know you're going out doing all these organizing while well, her husband homer brooks was he was an organizer too and so she answers pertly i love my husband and i'm a good cook emma Tenayuca was born and raised in san antonio texas during her high school years she uh, is aware of the inequality that Mexican Americans face in uh, San Antonio. She looks at the neighborhood conditions that her and her family and her community are living in, right? Um, they're segregated, they're very working class, um, you know, they're living in substandard housing conditions. 
she also, you know, goes around her neighborhood and her community uh, to ask people, what are the issues that affect you and your family? I think, you know, people think of her in terms of being very strong and, and very courageous, but I think people don't realize that she was so sensitive, she was so tender-hearted, compassionate, that she just could not stand to see human suffering. In 1938, uh, Emma Tendiuka kind of gets her big moment. Uh, 12,000 pecan shellers, um, who were mostly Mexican-American women in San Antonio, marched out of um, factories in San Antonio and went on strike. Something like 20% of the nation's pecans were shelled in San Antonio in the 1930s, and the conditions in the factories were awful. Um, they were poorly ventilated, so a lot of women were getting tuberculosis or other um, health issues. They were crowded. They didn't have a lot of bathrooms or other facilities that people needed, and they were paid really low wages, um, something like um, less than two dollars a week. So they went on strike and they elected Emma Tenayuka unanimously as the leader of the strike. Um, she was incredibly fierce. Uh, she was known as La Capitana, or the captain of the strike. So this labor dispute goes on for about six weeks. She organized demonstrations. Um, lots of people were jailed during the strike. The strike ends and pecan shellers earn a wage increase. But then the um, companies begin um, buying more um, machines that eliminate the laborers. But I think this movement kind of grew from there as they started thinking bigger um, about civil rights and minimum wages and, and things bigger than just the pecan shelling strike. But I think that learning about Emma Tenayuca not only, again, pushes uh, our understandings of Latino history and labor history to an earlier period, but she can serve as a model for inspiration uh, for our young kids. There was really no space for Latinx activists within the context of these movements. They had to create space for themselves, and that's something that I really aspire to do as well. Faith Flores was only 15 when she started making an app called Color to help prevent heat stroke among farm workers. The app sends alerts to workers during dangerous heat conditions and connects them to emergency services when needed. I have roots in the Central Valley. I was raised there for the first 10 years of my life and a lot of my family members were farm workers. So I felt a strong sense of kind of responsibility and obligation to go back home and to you know, serve my community in the best way that I could. I definitely think um, Latinx people are underrepresented in our education system. I mean, our history classes really only cover like our founding fathers, Declaration of Independence, just a lot of white history. Oftentimes, Black and other students of color never see themselves reflected in history books, learning the history of Emma Tenayuca. Uh, provides a window to see like this is what the power of the youth uh, can do.